What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 25 and we start on today's episode off with some player training drills as per usual where Shaw and Tony are both getting two drills each and Bogle gets that fifth and final drill and you might notice there Shaw has now hit 76 overall courtesy of the training and I have discussed it before uh, soon I will take him out of the two drills and just assign one drill to him and I'm going to take out that dribbling keep up the pace drill and uh, just leave him with one of the either crossing drills or passing drills. Um, um, and the reason being is quite simple. Uh, once his stamina hits 80, that'll be good enough for me uh, to be satisfied with him bombing up and down the pitch and left wing back roll. But also it's because the acceleration and sprint speed gap is just really weird and totally unrealistic. Um, it's annoying how you can't train acceleration. His acceleration remains at 55, so he's very slow off the mark. But you might have noticed his sprint speed now, due to all this training, is 83. It's just really weird. So, you know, he starts off really slow, but then once he gets going, he's really quick. It's just too weird for me. And uh, that's why I'm going to stop that training drill as soon as his stamina hits 80. But it's still first game of today's episode as Frank Lampard's Chelsea will come and take us on here at Bramwell Lane, coming on the back of our first win in the Premier League this season, the big victory against Fulham in the last game, the last episode. Now another West London side facing us here at Bramwell Lane. As we were looking for our second win in two games. Whilst we were the underdogs, we have played well in the first half and started the second half off strong too. Kef made a great save on Tony nine minutes after the restart to prevent Ivan from getting second goal of the season. It was still goalless, but really our defence in this game was absolutely stellar. Brilliant blocks, brilliant challenges. We were continuing to sit back, sit really deep in this game. As you can see, we're really, really deep with our defensive line. And looking to it, Chelsea on the counter, that's how we beat Fulham in our last game. And in the 76th minute, we did the exact same thing again. And as Tony was played through by Robinson, Ivan had all the time in the world to set himself, make up his mind as to where he's going to hit the ball. And as you can see, he finds the back of the net for his second goal of the season run all the way to the sidelines to celebrate with me as well. Unfortunately, Andrew Pele didn't want to celebrate with me. He had his back turned to me and got in the way of the bloody camera angle. Well, nice one, Andrew. Cheers for that, mate. But uh, yeah, Tony's showing me there that the lads are unified behind me. It's been a terrible, terrible start to the season, but they've uh, I've got their back in. These players are still playing for me, and Ivan Tony certainly is. Second goal of the season makes it 1-0 to the Blades, but again, our defense in this game was absolutely fantastic. Jaden Bogle was an absolute machine down our right wing back row. He was stopping Bernat and Christian Pulisic from getting any chances whatsoever. With two minutes to go, we broke on the counter once again. Well, we've looked our best in these past two games. Norwood finds Oli Shaw down the left. Loads of space for our 17-year-old score. His first goal over the club. No! Shot deflects off Matt Miazga. Hits the crossbar and Keffer pounces on the rebound. Shaw is still yet to score his first goal in a Sheffield United shirt. But it wouldn't matter no doubt was how the final score would uh, finish. Well, that's how the game would finish. And the final score was one nil. No surprise that the cameras panned to our boys in the back line as well because whilst Tony might have got the goal to separate the sides in a 1-0 victory, it was our boys in the back five that deserve all the applause. They were absolutely fantastic in particular Jaden Bogle who was my man in the match and also Ben Godfrey who I thought played really, really well as well. So a fantastic defensive display from Sheffield United to pick up the clean sheet against Chelsea and now in our four games in all competitions where we faced Frank Lampard's side Two wins, one draw, and only the one defeat, and also two clean sheets in four as well. That's really impressive against a high-powered offensive Chelsea side. I've got to be honest here, that's that's really, really impressive for us. You know, four games against the Blues and two wins picked up. I've got to be happy with that. Very, very good win there. And back-to-back -back victories for Sheffield United in the Premier League, starting off with no wins in eight games. Now two on the bounce, absolutely fantastic. And both wins coming at Bramwell Lane as well. I've got to be honest here, if we are to stay up this season, which of course is our aim and hopefully Touchwood will be able to do that and kick on then I think it's going to be our home form that will be the difference for us when we go away from home we don't feel very confident but when we're at Bramwell Lane in front of the home crowd in front of the 30,000 faithful I feel confident we'll be able to get at least a point whoever we face so big victory there against Chelsea big scalp Tony with the goal and a big three points for Sheffield United but still for our second of three games today we will take on the league leaders Liverpool here away at Anfield and as you would have seen by the league table before the game 10 games of Jurgen Klopp's Reds, 10 wins and only the one goal conceded. Whilst you might have had two wins from two, I was not feeling confident. We had a golden chance though to go one it up in the 12th minute. Aiden White, the 16-year-old getting a start in this game. What a stop though, as Liverpool could have gone a goal down there. Fantastic sales, it was still 0-0. And from the break, Henderson rolled it through to Salah. I tried to put him off with Dean Henderson. 
But oh my goodness gracious me, the Egyptian says to Dean, sit down and stay down. What a goal by Mohamed Salah. I brought out Henderson to close down the angle there and I thought I'd put off the Egyptian too. On his weaker right foot, from a tightish angle, only just inside the area. And he does that. God knows why Dean was diving. The ball was way over his head there. It went into orbit. came down. It was unbelievable the trajectory of that ball. But either way, Salah with the goal. 1-0. And the Reds were in front. Courtesy of a fabulous goal from Mohamed Salah. Trying to put off one of the best players in the world. It's rarely going to work. So 1-0 to Liverpool. Henderson was playing well though. Despite the goal Liverpool scored, he was making save after save after save in the first half. And it wasn't for Dean. We would have been more than one goal down. He was making some brilliant stops in the first half. Whilst we still did trail by one and deserved so we had Dean to thank for it not being two or three goals. But in the 70th minute, a chance for a break here. Musse plays it through to Ivan Tony, takes it around Virgil van Dijk. And my goodness, the Dutch centre half flew into this challenge as the former Southampton and Celtic man took down Ivan Tony. The referee gives him a booking. There's some afters, as Oliver Norwood saying, Referee, you want to check with VAR for that one? That could have been a straight red card. Lunges in from behind. Yes, he gets the ball, but it's a clattering challenge. And Klopp said, You know what? I've got to take van Dijk off. Lovren comes on as the Croatian uh, fills in for Van Dyke, and as Van Dyke walked past from the touchline, I pointed my finger at him and said, I'm watching you, mate. Big fan of him in real life, but my goodness, that was an awful challenge, and in my opinion, it so could have easily been a red, but it was still 1-0. Liverpool still had 11 men on the pitch, and it was one of their 11 that would get their second goal. Not their number 11, but their number 9. Roberto Firmino drilling it in as Liverpool go two goals up in the final 15 minutes to surely get the three points after Ivan Tony was still hobbling and in the 85th minute Cork would play through Tony basically limping on one leg at this point and Tony did get a goal to half deficit but sadly it was just a consolation Liverpool hold on and maintain their 100% record 11 wins from 11 to start the season off they definitely deserved a win no doubt about it they were so hard to stop in this game they might it for the title in real life I can't see anyone stopping them this year they're such a fantastic unit and uh, as things stand they're surely on course to win the title this year in the game as well 11 wins from 11 only two goals conceded but as for the injury for Ivan Tony, as you can see it's a two month injury and yet another big injury for one of our key players the shocker down for two months with a broken toe he soldiered on for the rest of that game after that challenge by Van Dyke with a broken toe talk about determination and perseverance from the shocker but Tony out for two months with a broken toe he's grown two ratings this year scored three goals in 11 Premier League games and chipped in with an assist as well but now we won't see him in to around the new year so Tony's going to miss some really really big games for us around December and particularly in December as well we're going to need as many bodies as possible we're going to be about Tony and McBurney for that clusterfuck of fixtures in December when you play like 10 games in 7 days or something ridiculous around Christmas so right now we're missing 4 of our key players Lundstrom Fleck Tony and McBurney we won't see 3 of them until December Tony won't be back until around January time just really really frustrating to have another injury picked up for one of our key members four players now that are normally in our first 11 or at least on the bench are out until around December January time 11 games in two wins on the ball for Sheffield United still out of relegation zone with nine points uh, everyone now has got a win Stoke City and Huddersfield have now finally got a win each uh, they were the only two teams remaining without a win they've both got one now whilst we are out of the relegation zone it has been a very tough start for our Blaze this season you know, not much money to work with in the transfer window didn't really get much opportunity to strengthen our team you know injury problems we've had to deal with at the start of the season have been pretty bad for some of our more important players uh, a bad run of form only two wins in 12 not a good start for us and also the recent run of fixtures too we've had to face Manchester United Chelsea Liverpool Everton and then Manchester City coming at the end of this month as well that's five really big games in seven five big teams faced in in seven games really tough run of fixtures for the Blades and so for our third and final game of today's episode taking on the Toffees here at Bramwell Lane they right now are in form in the Premier League sitting in third place in the top four and just six points beyond the league leaders and their rivals Liverpool this was going to be a really tough matchup for us to return to winning ways and 24 minutes in we would fall behind Moise Keane the former Juventus man makes it 1-0 to the visitors as Marco Silva's side break the deadlock and draw first blood and they were just dominating in the first half as well 
Gilfie, Sigurdsson and Moise Keane were running the show. They combined for their second goal right for half time as well. Great back heel by the Icelandic playmaker as number 10 assists number 27 and the Toffees had a deserved two goal lead heading into the first half. I just couldn't stop them. You know, last year it's worth pointing out, Everton were the first team we beat in the Premier League. We beat them by two goals to one away at uh, Goodison Park but they also faced us on the final home game of the season last year and they tore us apart and won by four goals to one. We were 3-0 down right after the break. Fabian Delft made it free for the visitors and we were just getting absolutely dominated in this game. In the 68th minute, they did get a consolation goal. Osborne found Callum Robertson. Lovely finish past Jordan Pickford to make it 3-1 and at least give us a glimmer of hope, but that's all it was. A consolation for Callum as he gets his fourth of the Premier League this season. Good start for Robertson. Four goals already this year, but either way, three on the final score. Don't be fooled by the Robertson goal. The visitors were the stronger side and thoroughly deserved the three points with Moise Keen and Gilfie Sigerson in particular running the show in this match. So another defeat for the Blaze. Back-to-back -back losses for Sheffield United. Those back-to-back -back wins now are looking like a distant memory. 12 games in, only the two victories for our Blades. Yes, we're out of the relegation zone. With all those injuries of a really tough run of form to start the season off, it has been a very difficult start. But that was today's episode of Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, please drop a like. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode featuring that huge Huddersfield Town game very soon.